Hi, Casimir, and welcome to my home. Mm, thank you, Gregor. Yeah, you are known on social media to live on the countryside, chopping wood and uh, herding uh, sheep. Uh, what can we learn about hens and hen house? Well, so I, I have here my hen house, uh, which is built, uh, it's called an A tractor, because it's built on an A frame, and uh, uh, it's a tractor because you move it around so that the hen can always have new fresh grass. It's a very simple construction, it's just uh, three sheets of plywood, a bit like a tent. And on the inside, <coughs> well on the inside we have a feeder, water, there is a staircase for the hen to go in and out. Uh, they have their uh, uh, resting um, pins and uh, they can be under the hen house. And there is a door you can open on the back so they can go out. And I have used, uh, building this, I've used the minimum viable product approach. So I have done uh, as simple construction as possible. And now I've added a infrared light, also another light. And uh, well, the thing is, as you see, the infrared light is on, even though it's 10 degrees Celsius. So I would like to put in some form of automation to to turn it on only when it's needed yeah. and to make sure that the light is only turn well hen need 13 hours of daylight uh, to be productive mm. and i want to turn it on at 7 turn it off when the sun rises and then turn it on again when the sun sets and have it turned on so long that from they have 13 hours of light currently i'm i'm solving this with just a timer for the light and uh, well I just leave the heat on all the time. Yeah. It's about 50 watts of uh, power, so it's yeah. not a huge... So this is a good example if you want to do some home automation at, we talked in Architecture Corner with Joachim. Yeah, so, so I, I would like to, uh, to add some uh, computer control for this. Maybe it's not necessary, but it would be a cool project. Uh, the thing to think about here is that, that we're basically outdoors. So, so we, we are, uh, it's kind of wet, uh, the hen create lots of dust, there, there is lots of ammonia gases, uh, so it's, um, <clears throat> it's, not, it's not even like normal outdoors. The uh, environment is, is much more aggressive. We, are, we have been talking a little bit about no requirements. How does this fit in when you, you have a lot of requirements well, already? I, I, I have lots of requirements, <laughs> right? I have, I have legal and regulatory requirements for, for the hen house as such. Yeah. I have economic requirements because I don't want to pay uh, $100 per egg, yeah. right? So, uh, and I also have requirements of, for instance, uh, this is a mobile unit, but that means I must be able to at least drag it along the ground. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, the most important thing, I think, is to have the lights automatically yeah. controlled. Yeah. Heat is the second most important thing. They, they, they can't have too much heat and uh, they can't have too little either. No. So you need to uh, have some temperature sensor, things like that. Yes. So. Temperature sensor and uh, I was thinking of having a daylight sensor, but then I realized that uh, that's built into most IoT kits. Yeah. So it's a nice project. Uh, do you know how to do it? Uh, well, I have some ideas, but uh, especially the 230 volt relays, I don't know where to find those. Yeah. Should we call Joachim? Because he is good on IoT things. Well, let's try that. Yeah. Yeah, hello Joachim. It's uh, uh, me, uh, Casimir. I'm here with Gregor and we're talking about IoT in his hen house. Is it possible for you to help us later on? Uh, 